All right, so there's a couple of elements here that I want to show you in this uh, September wallpaper. Uh, the quotation there, the numbers, the obvious word, the September, the signing block at the very bottom, and then um, the background wallpaper, and then you have this diagonal line, and then you also have this uh, text here, uh, which is a separate texture that I brought in on top of the leaves texture. And that's essentially what makes this up. So I'm going to show you the pieces of it um, as, we, as we go along here. So I start with, um, with Inkscape. And all of these letters are individual objects. It's from a, a typeface I created called Textura. And um, uh, one of them is available on my website. It's called Textura Tall and Narrow. And it is commercially available for purchase. And each of these are elements, even these swirls that I have can be replaced and moved around and, and things of that nature. Um, and it's a complete collection of about 300 characters times four typefaces. Um, so it's, it's over a thousand characters roughly, something on that nature. Uh, numbers, special characters, swirls, um, flicks, all kinds of things that can be added to calligraphy. In this case, I'm going to take this swirl and just kind of drag it on top. And I put it into Inkscape there, and now I can attach it right to the letter R. And that's, that's it. That's how easy it is to move this stuff around and to create any, any art creation you wanted to do. Um, I also have, of course, uh, lowercase letters, uppercase letters. You'll notice you'll see three or four different variations of each. Um, and I do that on purpose. In this case, I'm going to take this letter R and sort of interchange it, just to show you how easy it is again. Um, I can move that, delete it, pick this one down. It's a slightly different style, but that's okay. I'm just playing around here. And um, if I don't like that, I can just hit Control Z and get rid of it, just like I've done there. So once this stage is done, then basically I save that as an SVG, and I also export it as a bitmap. And I export the page in this case, and I set my resolution. I set my target destination, and, and then I click export. And basically what it does is it create, creates this bitmap image, in this case blue lettering on top of a transparent background. And then I can bring it into Inkscape and run a trace on that bitmap image and it creates this black and white image for me and I just use the trace bitmap and I just adjust the threshold in this case I use 0 0.65 0 0.65 I click update and then I click OK and it generates that black and white lettering that you see there and that's really zoomed in to show you some of the detail that you can get from that and that's the full extent of that lettering there now this is black and when I bring it into GIMP, I actually just do a quick inversion to turn it to white. This is the background I used. And this is from Allie Taylor on sxc.hu, a great source for free textures, royalty-free textures. It's a very high resolution image uh, that I'm using. That gets brought into GIMP. And then you can see the near final image here in GIMP. The only thing this is missing is the signing block at the very bottom, and I do that separately. I have my own separate template for that. Uh, so I can bang through these fairly quick. Um, what I have here is the quotation itself, the September quote uh, that I'm turning on and off. It has its own background layer. Um, the September lettering, that's one of them. I duplicated that because I really wanted to bring out the white color in September. And scrolling down here, you can see the drop shadow behind the September. And then what I have here just below that is the diagonal pattern that I created. And I'm going to show you how to create that um, coming up quickly here. So I'm going to turn that back on. You'll notice it has its own layer mask associated with it, which means that only the pattern shows up in the middle of the, of the art and not along the outer edge, as I'm showing here. And the next thing I have here below that is the texture, the lettering texture that I added. And that's just an old writing texture that I brought in here, removed the background, and then just uh, switched it to overlay mode. 
This here is a layer I used to darken the background image. It was showing up as too light. I wanted to darken it. So I created a, a new layer, filled it black, and just shifted it to overlay and brought down its opacity. Now with the background layer, you notice here there's four actual layers that kind of look the same. And I'm going to show you how to create those. But what that does is it basically creates a, a, a vignette around the outer edge of the lettering. Or I should say the, the outer edge of the, of the boundary, the background image without having a, a dark vignette that you would see someone do in Photoshop or something like that. And, and that's essentially the image. Now what I'm doing is I'm just dragging and dropping uh, the background texture into GIMP. And I'm going to do a crop operation on this. I like working in 16 by 9. So I'm going to use a fixed uh, aspect ratio here for my crop. And I'm going to start in one corner and go right to the edge. And then I'm going to take that side right to the edge to maximize the image. And then I'm going to center my crop on the image itself. And then I'm going to click in the center to execute that. And it's cropped my image 16 by 9. And it's left me with a very large canvas of 3,500 by 19, almost 2,000. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to create that background vignette effect. And I'm doing a selection here around the outer edge. Very simple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather this selection. So I go select feather. I'm going to use a very high value of 500. I'm going to click OK to that. And it creates a very soft edge around it. I'm going to make sure this has an alpha channel because I want to remove the inside of it. And by clicking the delete key, you'll notice that the inside of that image has now been deleted. I'm just turning the background off to show you that. It's a nice soft fuzzy sort of edge to it. Now what I can do is I can change the properties of this outer edge. And if I go to colors, hue, saturation, I can keep the hue exactly the same, but I can bring down the lightness, thereby making the outer edge a little bit darker. And I can also play with the saturation a little bit to desaturate the outer edge. That gives it kind of a little bit of a darker effect to it. I'm going to duplicate that layer once more, switch its opacity to overlay, and you can see the effect that it's starting to build. I'm just going to desaturate that as well, just by using colors desaturate. And I have my background almost to the way I want it. I'm just going to use colors and I'm going to use the curves tool and I'm going to bring down the lower edge of that curves tool so that I can darken that image a little bit more. Perfect. That's exactly the way I want it. Now all I need to do is add in the calligraphy that I created in the earlier step by using the black and white version of September. So I just drag and drop that right into the image as I've done there. I'm going to change the size because it, GIMP allows me to do that when bringing in an SVG file. Size to about 3000. Just going to minimize that window, get it out of the way. There I go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that September which is in black and I'm going to invert that to white. Just by using colors invert, that's perfect. Now I'm going to move that a little off center to the upper part. I used what's, what's called a, more of an optical center. And uh, I'm going to bring that layer all the way to the top. And I'm just going to align it center. So I click the align key, I click the layer, and I click center. And that center is my September perfectly within the arrangement. Now what I want to do is duplicate that layer. I want to take its duplicate on the bottom and I want to invert it back to black actually. And then what I want to do is I want to create a selection around that. So I'm going to go alpha to selection which gets a perfect outline of that lettering. And then I want to grow that selection. I'm going to grow it by a value of about 20, 20 pixels. Click OK to that and it gives me a nice outline around the lettering. I'm going to use the bucket fill, fill the whole selection black, 
and it gives me this very ugly looking sort of outline here. I get rid of my selection, I go to filters, and I go blur, Gaussian blur, and use a large value of about 50. And I'm just going to check that to make sure it worked. It did. Perfect. Click OK to actually do the operation. And it fades my, uh, my shadow there. Then what I do is I go to Grain Merge so that it's not as dark and as in your face as it is. And that's essentially, uh, that's essentially all there is to that step. The next step I'm going to show you is how to create the... Um, the textured uh, diagonal background. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a new layer. I'm going to make it a transparent layer. And I'm going to add this texture to it. So I'm going to find it. I go to my textures panel, scroll down. And there's this like hazard panel that I kind of kind of like hazard texture that I kind of like here. So I'm going to fill it with the hazard texture, the whole selection. It's going to make a really ugly looking uh, image here, which I'll fix later. And I'm going to remove the black part of that texture. And I can do that very easily by going color to alpha. Uh, so those black diagonal lines I want to get rid of. So I have to change that white color to black. And then when I click OK, it removes all of the black in the image. That's getting closer to what I want. Now what I want to do is I want to add a layer mask to the image, a white layer mask, and then I want to fill it with a black and white radial fill from white in the center to black to the outer edge. And what that will do is it will remove that yellow background around the outer edge of the layer. So I click in the center of the image and I drag outwards and you'll notice in my mask, the layer mask on the right hand side, it goes from white to black and you notice in my image it goes from yellow to nothing. And that's exactly the effect I want. I'm just going to bring that down in intensity to give it an overlay. I'm going to go back to my uh, navigation tool, which I find so handy, and you can see how that image looks here. That's the final sort of uh, overlay. And you notice along the outer edge, that overlay just does not exist. And that's because I used the mask. And that's essentially it. Thanks for watching.